Today we're going a lot more in depth on how to get an external display on your 991A. I'm going to show you all the hardware, the cabling, the software, how everything runs, and uh, hopefully you can figure this out. So first things first, you need your radio, you need this right here, which is an antenna switch box. I'll explain this a little bit more uh, a little later on. You're going to need an SDR. You're going to need some sort of computer. And as far as cabling, you're going to need a CAD cable to control your radio. You're going to need to make this cable. What this is, is the 8-pin that plugs into the linear uh, amp port. All this does is sends, when you transmit, it sends a signal to ground and it activates the relays inside this box. So if you look in your manual on page 17, you have a pinout for that jack. Pin two is your transmit ground. So you're gonna take that and a voltage from there and run it to this. So all it is is the dim plug and then a little mono eighth inch jack. You're gonna need an SMA to SMA connector to go from the SDR to the switch, a coax jumper from the switch to the radio, and a little power supply for the antenna switch. So I'll show you how this all goes together, how it gets wired up. One more. You need a USB cable from the computer to the SDR receiver. So we'll wire this up, I'll show you. Power the radio. This is the antenna in. It's gonna go to the back of this box. So here we have the radio, the antenna, push to talk. I'll show you all of this. The SDR input and your power. So, the antenna goes here. You take your jumper. Now this is going to go to the HF antenna side on the radio. This is just hooked up to a 10 meter right now. Antenna pass through. And then you're going to take this SMA cable. Now, I will say with this box, this SMA input is very, very sensitive. Uh, in the two I've seen, both of them have had to have the, uh, the jack resodded because they would separate from the board and they wouldn't be soldered good from the factory. All right, so from there to there, this is the antenna input on your SDR. We take this USB cable. This runs right into your computer. Next, you're going to take your cat control cable. This is a serial one. You can get them for different ports. Let me 
just plugs right into the back of the radio. This into the computer. This is the power for switch box. And the last is this cable. So it's going to go right into the tuna jack. And then this plug is going to go right into the PTT hole on here. I have to run it through something separate because of uh, another project, but it's the same thing. For it to work correctly, that's got to be there. So, what did we just do? We've got everything wired up. I know, it's a mess right here. Plug our mic in. All right, so we just plugged a whole bunch of shit in. What does it do? This box right here is what makes all of this possible. What this does is when you transmit, it switch. It takes a signal from that cord I made, and it grounds the antenna output going to the SDR. So when you transmit, this isn't receiving, or you will blow it up. You will overload it and blow it up. You'll have to get it repaired. It's a disaster. Inside this box, there is a jumper that you have to move. When it comes from the factory, it's set to only receive out of the SMA port, so your radio will be dead. You have to move the jumper over, and then it'll share between the radio and the switch, or the SDR, rather. So, outside of installing all the drivers, I'll show you what programs you need, how to make this work, what it does, and, uh, yeah. We're going to open up the program called SDR Console. All right now, I already have this installed. You're going to have to go through whatever drivers you need to for your, your CAT cable, for your, um, for your SDR. I will say with the SDR Play, if you install SDR Uno, it will install all the drivers you need for the SDR to the point where it's just plug and play. So, okay. So, here we'll RSPDX and we'll start that. Okay. Now, 10 meters is dead, but you can see we now have a waterfall. But if you look in the corner here, now, I'm spinning the VFO on the radio. The computer, if you can see that cursor, is following along with me. So when there's activity, you'll see it all on here. Now, there's a bit of software that you have to install to get the radio to communicate with the program. If you already have your your cable set up and you have a logging program or something like that that tracks the radio it should be okay you should be running omni rig already but what we do is in this little corner you could pop up this now this is omni rig i don't know how well you can see it But this is what interfaces between the computer and the radio. So here you have the model, the 991, whatever the applicable COM port is, whatever it installed as your computer, the board rate, data bits, all the stuff you usually have to set up when you're setting up a COM port. You have to make sure it's matched to the radio and the port's correct. There's lots of videos on how to do that. So once you're working in here, what you can do this window will not be here when you first start 
SDR console. You have to add something to it. So how you add the external radio box is you go into view up top. I'm going to go over to select. You click select. It's going to pull up this menu. You're going to check external radio. Hit OK. It's going to ask you to restart the program. And then this box will be there. From this box, you can access OmniRig to set everything up. And then you'll see in the bottom it says FT991 online. So now, whatever we do over here is mimicked over here, making this essentially a waterfall from your radio. They call this a pan adapter. But the way I see it, it's just an extension of the radio. Once you get used to using it like this, you'll never go back. So this thing right here is really what makes it all possible. You could have an SDR, but even if it's talking to the radio already, like I said, if you transmit while that thing's receiving, you will blow out the front end. It'll get overloaded. It's too much for it. So you have to run this little switch box. There are some different models. I'll see if I can find links to them. This is the most generic and common. It's relatively cheap. But that's all you need. It's not that difficult. There's uh, many different models of SDR and stuff like that. This is the one I use. The, uh, the RTL dongles work well too. They're a little more condensed. That way you don't have the the USB cord and all that stuff running around. It's just plugs right into the computer. You plug the antenna in and that's that. But outside of that, that's how you do it. That's how you get the display. If you got any questions, let me know. Hopefully this helps. Uh, you guys have been asking for this for a long time and honestly, it's just a huge pain in the ass to get all this stuff off the desk. So I hope this answered a lot of the questions. I'll, uh, I'll link to everything I can for parts and hardware and cables and all that stuff. But uh, good luck. Let me know if you need anything.